And yet, what about our children? The limits that we have for wireless radiation that were set decades ago in 1996, based on science from even earlier, based, by the way, on a handful of animal studies where they heated them up with microwaves and said, oh, this is the level. They had a temperature, a rectal thermometer, and never looked at long-term exposures, but had these intense short-term exposures. Those never considered the impacts to children who are, of course, more sensitive. They have a developing brain. The limits that we have are based on a large adult man with a big head. These limits have not changed for 25 years. This is a large head. It's called the SAM. You'll hear it referred to as SAM, but it's the standard anthropomorphic man. When devices are brought to market, you know, with drugs, you get some tests. Of course, it's an inadequate process that the FDA has, but they have a series of tests. And in, in, when it comes to phones, they have these tests with phones where they just check, does it heat up the brain inside this big plastic head, 11 pounds, 220 pound man. They actually have a body phantom too, six feet, two inches tall. This is the 10% of US military recruits in 1989 that, that the model, the phantom that is used to test phones is based on. And they share these tests that show that the head is not heated up to a certain degree. And that's the test that's used to test cell phones. And here's another picture from the, um, it's an industry conference in Barcelona. And here you have the specific, the, the SAM, SAM. Here's another picture of the test system. And inside these heads, these big heads, they have a thick liquid that supposedly mimics the brain. It's a homogenous liquid. It's not a, a, a liquid like your actual brain is, which is varying tissues of varying electrical, uh, the conductivity varies. And also in the real brain, and they've shown this, they've actually looked at cow brains and exposed cow brains to microwave radiation and found that the, the radiation can, can, there can be hot spots, different ways that the, the microwaves move through the tissue. You think about um, when you put a, your food in a microwave oven, it doesn't heat that food in the same way, right? Sometimes you get these hot spots. It's cold on one side and warm on the other. Well, what's going on? So the way we test phones is absolutely inadequate to, it doesn't represent how the radiation moves through our brain. So let me show you an example by a scientist that we work with, uh, Claudio Fernandez and colleagues of uh, the cell phone to the head. And this is imaging that uses kind of like a heat map. The colors represent the rate of absorption into the brain. So here we have the white and yellow as the highest intensities, then it goes to uh, purple and blue. And you can see this radiation is absorbed into the brain. And when it comes to children, they have more intense exposures deeper into their brain and more exposure from the same device, more of their brain is exposed because of course they have smaller heads. So the radiation doesn't have as long to go to get to memory centers and important brain centers. And this is an adult head and a child's head. And this has been published uh, in over the years, many papers have documented this, including the World Health Organization references what I'm about to share with you in terms of facts about cell phone radiation into the brain. Children have two to three times higher cell phone radio exposure into their brain, up to 10 times higher cell phone radiation absorption into the skull, two to five times higher cell phone radiation absorption into their eyes. And this is a study uh, that looked at a virtual reality where they place a phone into a device, you put it up to your head, and when in children, are being handed these in schools, Google Cardboard or uh, these virtual reality systems. But what about the impacts to the developing eye? And of course, children will have a lifetime of exposure 
unlike adults, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm 50. So I remember what life was like. I've only really heavily used phones for a decade. And yet our children are exposed before they are born. And they might not be using cell phones, but, you know, this was me with my baby. I had a cell phone, put it right here. In fact, I tucked it right into the little snuggly, completely unaware. And we're using phones all the time. That cell phone radiation is going into her brain and it's also going into the child's brain. And yet we're told lots to love, less to spend, they say, but actually the, the market for wireless technology is uh, just blasting off. So it's not just phones, right? There's all kinds of devices. A few more facts about cell phones. There was zero pre-market safety tests for long-term health effects when cell phones came on the market. There was not pre-market safety testing, as you would expect. There's zero U.S. agencies that have reviewed the totality of the science. Even if you put together what agencies were working on this, of which there are only two, which I'll talk about, there's been no review of the totality of the science. And these are straight facts. You can go to our website at ehtrust.org to get the, the documentation. There's a GAO report. Um, if you actually take the time to look, as I'm going to talk about to our federal agencies, you'll see that there's no reports or white papers. Where's the report on the impacts related to oxidative stress? Where's the reports on the impacts to the developing brain? And there's zero budget by US agencies to research health effects to children. And right now, after that $30 million study, the only thing that's happening, and it's not, there's not a budget line item, is that the National Toxicology Program is doing some additional research on wireless radiation. But we don't have an extensive research program as you would expect. In fact, if wireless radiation were a drug, as Dr. Dever Davis says, it would be banned. There's so many side effects that are being reported, yet there's no process by even which to get that information monitored or put together for people to even review because there's not measuring being done. And here, this is completely typical situation uh, where the phone is right near the baby. Babies have thinner skulls. The other thing to know about our tests, it's a complete scam. We have these large adult heads and phones are placed against an ear spacer. See this little thing is actually a spacer. They're not actually tested the way we might use them um, against the body. And there's even images, I should have put it here, where we have phones that are pressed up against the head, put in hats. Um, boys put them in their hats just to, they don't have a purse, so they stick them in the hats and they're not tested that way. The way we test devices is outdated and completely irrelevant. It's only based on heat. These tests were developed uh, pre-1996, but set in 1996. And that spacer makes for a serious situation, which I'm going to talk about now. So what I'm showing you is an image of testing that was done by the French government. They tested hundreds of cell phones. And you see this space. This is actually the body phantom, and they put the phone into this test system, and there's a space here, five millimeters, for the Apple iPhone 11. When the government of France, the French testing agency, um, ANFR, they did SAR tests, which are specific absorption rate tests on over 400 phones. And they found that when they tested them, um, at body contact, which is not this test, I'm sorry, I don't have a picture where it actually, the phone is touching the, the test system, which is a bad test system, but nonetheless, that's what they use. They found that most of them violated the regulatory limits that they had. So in 2016, actually, they, I have the date a little off, it was proposed, but it's actually, sorry. Um, the directive changed, and now they changed the separate the test distance to five millimeters as the maximum allowed distance. They still allow a distance, but in the United States, we have devices, cell phones, which are actually tested at um, 15. They have a 15 millimeter separation. They are not tested 
we have a much, they're not tested touching the body. We much have a much larger distance that's allowed. In 2019, Professor Om Gandhi, who helped set the limits that we have now in the United States, published a paper in the IEEE that found that if phones were tested at body contact, those ANFR phones, according to the way the US FCC tests phones and to our regulatory limits, that the violations of the regulatory limits will be up to 11 times. And in France, 30 cell phones models, 30 models of cell phones have been software updated or removed from the market because of these excesses. Here's another example of the, the, uh, the separation that's typically used. Now, in the United States, the US FCC is completely ignoring this reality that phones are not tested in body contact. And we have been writing and sending that information. And yet the FCC uh, is stating that even if the phones exceed government limits, that it's still safe because they have such a big safety margin, which you can go online and learn more about how we address that issue. There is no safety margin. Um, there's no 50 fold safety margin.